My spiritual daughter screamed as she saw her newborn brother. Why is my mom holding a criminal? Mom, why are you holding a criminal? A criminal? Confused, I saw Kyle approach with a pale face. He immediately snatched the baby clothes from Tyler's stomach and tossed them into the nearby trash can. Hey, wait, just as I was about to scold Kyle, my phone rang. It was my mother-in-law, Stephanie. Did you get my gift? I hope this one isn't another creepy kid. The moment I heard her voice over the phone, I understood everything. The package wasn't sent by my grandmother-in-law, Ella, but rather by Stephanie under Ella's name. And judging by her tone, she seemed to know about Anna's mysterious ability. In other words, it was a declaration of war against us. Well, if that's how she wants to play it, I've got my own plan. I've been putting up with this for a long time, but if she's going to insult my precious daughter, I won't hold back. No matter how much she cries, I will never forgive her. I'll bring her down to rock bottom, I gritted my teeth. My name is Lauren Finch. I'm 33 and worked for my dad's company until I got married. By the way, my dad's company is a franchise management firm, its main focus is on the restaurant industry, like family dining. I'd like to return someday, but right now, the family I started with my marriage five years ago is my priority. My husband, Kyle, is also an employee of my dad's company, and we met at work. He's a serious guy, and I fell in love at first sight and married him. Our dating life was smooth, and our daughter, Anna, was born soon after we got married. Although my life feels fulfilled, there is one major issue I face. It's my in-laws, my mother-in-law, Stephanie in particular, has it out for me. Was it because I made a bad first impression on her? I stumbled when I first met her, that was where it all began. I first met Stephanie when I visited my in-laws to announce our marriage. Of course, I had nothing to be ashamed of, plus Kyle and I had carefully prepared beforehand, so I approached this meeting with confidence. But then, an unexpected event happened. It was right after we announced that we were getting married. I noticed something strange about Stephanie. Stephanie, are you okay? What do you mean by that? Well, you don't look so good, I said. She looked unwell, but that wasn't the case. Actually, I have a mysterious ability. I can see people's colors. People who are unwell appear in darker shades, while healthy people seem bright. However, I can't tell where someone is sick or why. At that moment, Stephanie appeared in a dark shade, so I thought she was feeling ill. But since it was my first time meeting Stephanie, I found it hard to tell her the truth. So, that's why I phrased it that way. But this seemed to get on Stephanie's nerves, and she suddenly frowned, looking annoyed. Then, with a dissatisfied tone, she said, You say strange. Things too, don't you? Did I say something strange? I asked back. Stephanie snorted. Yes, that way of talking is just like Kyle's. Like Kyle's? I glanced back at Kyle, and he awkwardly looked away. What's going on? I wondered. But then, Stephanie started eyeing me up and down, asking, could it be that you see strange things too? What? Kyle's been that way since he was young. He'd always claimed to see things that aren't really there. Suddenly, Stephanie launched into a rant. Here's what she said. Kyle had always been able to see things that others couldn't. She didn't know what those things were but Kyle would claim there were people around when no one was there. Stephanie found Kyle's behavior disturbing. Then she asked if I was the same way. No, I just thought you looked a little pale, I stammered in my excuse. But she didn't listen at all. In the end, after being aggressively questioned, I admitted I could see the colors of people. So, you're just like him? It's creepy. Well, I've had enough. Get out. Don't come back. Stephanie drove us away. Reluctantly, I left her house. Once outside, Kyle apologized to me. I'm sorry. Lauren, why are you apologizing? Kyle, well, because I hid the fact that I have these abilities, you know, this sixth sense. Kyle looked down sadly. I gently linked my arm with his. That's something we're both guilty of, right? I kept quiet about it too, but with my mom acting like that, marriage, it'll be okay, I'm sure. Stefan will oppose our marriage despite my words. That thought lingered in my mind, but his father, Andy, didn't say anything. If he could be on our side, I pinned my hopes on him. After that, Kyle and I decided to secretly call Annie without telling Stephanie. We arranged to meet at a local diner run by my dad's company. Kyle couldn't join because of his work, so I was tense waiting alone when Andy arrived. Sorry to call you out. It's okay. I happen to be off today, Andy said. He works for a security company and he had a day off today. The timing of my message was just right, and I felt a slight sense of relief. So, the reason I asked you here today is about your wedding, right? I don't object. Annie was in a good mood, smiling brightly. I was taken aback by how easy that was. But according to Annie, Stephanie is still against my marriage with Kyle. However, it's not impossible to convince her. As I listened, Annie explained. She's stingy, so she'll probably come around with money. When I visited their house, I mentioned my dad runs a company. 
Apparently, Stephanie still cares about that. So that's the angle to use, Auntie suggested. As I pondered, he made a suggestion. Why don't you treat her to a nice meal at the restaurant? Maybe help out with what her mom makes sense. If you show that there's a benefit to marrying, she'll probably agree. Their lifestyle won't change just because we get married. In fact, they'll gain something from it. If Stephanie understands that, she might accept our marriage. That makes sense. I decided to put it into practice. The first thing I did was treat Stephanie to a lovely dinner. All I did was invite Stephanie to the diner. Stephanie, I'm treating you today. So, treating at a diner? Yes, it's one of my dad's company's restaurants, I explained the background. Stephanie kept a dissatisfied look on her face, but when asked for her order, she kept requesting dish after dish. I'll have this and that, and this one too, please. Okay, I'm sure. I hurried to the kitchen. In the end, Stephanie polished off several portions. As she was leaving, she said to me, I'll be back again. Be ready for me. And um, what about our wedding? I'll think about it. With those words, Stephanie left. It's no surprise that I continued to do everything I could afterward. For instance, I took over caring for Kyle's grandmother, Ella. Until then, that's what Stephanie's been doing. Although Ella was elderly, she could still take care of herself. My role was more about visiting her a few times each month. Each time we met, Ella would give me a concerned look and say, you haven't even married yet. I visit because I want to. My own grandmother passed away a long time ago, so seeing Ella brings back nostalgic feelings. That sense of comfort leads me to visit her often. Should I offer my support for you two to get married? After several visits, Ella became a strong advocate for our relationship. Thanks to her encouragement, Stephanie accepted our marriage. Even afterward, visiting Ella remained my responsibility. Not long after we got married, our daughter Anna was born. I had to quit my job because it became too difficult to balance it all. But there was one thing that worried me more than work. What if Anna didn't like Ella? What if she th? W a tantrum and became a burden? Initially, those concerns lingered, but they quickly proved unfounded. Anna was fascinated by Ella's antique collection, so she began visiting eagerly just to discuss them with Ella. I felt relieved watching their bond flourish. As time went by, Anna turned four. Then one day when we arrived at Ella's house, we were surprised to see Stephanie. There. After leaving Anna with Ella, Stephanie called me into the kitchen. Stephanie, is everything all right? How much money do you have? What? How much? I was taken aback, but Stephanie quickly put her index finger to her lips. You're too loud. Be quiet. Oh, sorry. So, listen, she began talking with a stern expression. Here's the backstory. Andy, now 65, recently retired, something I was aware of and had already sent my congratulations for him. But that's not where the problem lies. It turned out that my in-laws had little to no savings. They would now rely on their pension, but it's hard to live on that. Alone. They turned to Ella for help, but she refused, saying she was also strapped for cash, abandoning her daughter. What a terrible mother. So, you two need to send some money to us. Well, I'll talk to Kyle. That was all I could manage to say at the moment. After getting home, I immediately brought it up to Kyle. He sighed before replying, I had a feeling this would happen. For now, I'll send my savings. And so, we began sending money to my in-laws. However, Ella seemed to realize it immediately. The next time we visited her, she said, I've heard you're supporting Stephanie. Stephanie was the name of my mother-in-law. I quietly nodded. Yes, it seems like they're struggling. They've never been good at planning. Ella was Stephanie's biological mother and seemed to know her well. I'm sorry for causing you trouble. No, it's okay. Thinking about the future only made me anxious. There's a possibility we could continue to be exploited, but if we stopped supporting them, Stephanie would undoubtedly get angry and accuse us of abandoning her. I wondered if there was a good solution. My face naturally grew more serious. Then, suddenly, Ella gently patted my head and spoke kindly. If you keep looking like that, it'll stress out your baby. My baby? I didn't realize. You're pregnant. Alice smiled. I was astonished. My health hadn't changed much, and I certainly hadn't noticed any sign of pregnancy. Pregnant? I muttered. That's when Anna, who was next to me, said, the baby is here. Anna gently stroked my stomach. In that moment, I became aware that I was pregnant. I visited the obstetrics and gynecology department the same day, and after the examination, it was confirmed. I was indeed expecting. Anna, how did you know? Well, I could see. As soon as I heard those words, my heart skipped to be a T. Maybe Anna is like us. I can see people's colors, and Kyle can see things others can't, so it wouldn't be surprising if Anna, our daughter, shared similar abilities. For now, I told Kyle about Anna and the pregnancy, but because of Stephanie, Kyle wanted to keep Anna's situation a secret. I agreed with his opinion, and thus, Anna became our secret. 
As my belly gradually grew larger, my visits to Ella's house became less frequent. I was worried about Ella's well-being, but I was also a little frustrated that I couldn't go see her. It was then we received word from Stephanie that Ella had been hospitalized. It seemed that her health had deteriorated. Being elderly, her situation was incredibly concerning, but since I couldn't visit, I had no choice but to leave her care in Kyle's hands. Before long, my due date arrived, and I was admitted to the maternity ward. It happened that night. Kyle called me to inform me that Ella had passed away. By the time I was discharged from the hospital, her funeral had already taken place. As soon as I was out, I resolved to visit her grave immediately. With this thought in mind, I faced childbirth. Perhaps because Ella was watching over me, I had a very smooth delivery. A healthy baby boy was born, and we decided to name him Tyler. It was three days later, a package arrived at the hospital addressed in Ella's name. No way, she thought of this. Inside were baby clothes for a boy. We hadn't told Ella the baby's gender yet, but somehow she seemed to have known. Kyle must have inherited his gift from her. With this overwhelming feeling, I held Tyler close and fitted him with the clothes. They look perfect, I whispered. Just as Kyle and Anna walked into the room. Mom, where's the baby? He's right here, I answered Anna, showing her Tyler dressed in his new clothes. At that moment, Anna looked puzzled. Before I could ask what was wrong, she blurted out, Mom, why are you holding a criminal? A criminal? Confused, I was about to ask more when Kyle approached with a pale face. He quickly snatched the baby clothes off Tyler's belly and tossed them into the nearby trash can. Hey, wait, I started to reprimand Kyle when my phone suddenly rang. It was Stephanie. Did you get my gift? I hope this one isn't another creepy kid. The moment I heard her voice, everything became clear. The package hadn't been sent by Ella but by Stephanie using Ella's name, and judging by her tone, she seemed to know about Anna's mysterious ability. This was her declaration of war against us. If that's the way she wants it, then I've got my own plans. I've put up with her nonsense long enough, but if she tries to undermine my sweet daughter, I won't hold back. No matter how much she cries and screams, I will never forgive her. I'll drag her down into the abyss. I gritted my teeth, then asked Kyle, what did you see? Mom trying to reach for Tyler, Kyle muttered softly in response. I nodded before speaking kindly to Anna. Anna, why did you call him a criminal? But, Mom, you were holding a criminal. A criminal? Who? It wasn't Tyler, right? When I asked her, Anna hung her head, then she answered in a small voice, Grandma. So it's Stephanie. I tried to contain my anger and asked Anna for more details. Why do you say she's a criminal? Because she stole something. I listened carefully to Anna's subdued story. Anna told me like this. According to her, Stephanie had been seen stealing things. The location was obvious. The only place Stephanie and Anna could have crossed paths was at Ella's house. In other words, Stephanie had stolen something from Ella's house. However, it didn't seem like she was retaliating against me or Tyler for witnessing her theft, and the baby clothes were all store-bought. What was her intention? Then it hit me. Could there be more? I quickly checked the remaining items. The box was filled with nothing but baby clothes, but at the bottom, I found a small paper bag. When I opened it, I found a card with 13 on it. I tossed the entire paper bag into the trash. I was filled with fear. Why did she send me such a card? Stephanie definitely knows better than that. We'll have to rethink our approach. Could it be that she's unhappy about Tyler being born? If she harbors ill intentions toward Tyler, what triggered it? For now, I asked Anna what she knew. Stephanie spoke like she was aware of Anna's sixth sense. It must be related somehow. That's why I thought so. As I listened to Anna's story, it became clear how Stephanie discovered Anna's ability. It happened not long after my pregnancy was confirmed. That day I left Anna with Ella while I went shopping. I only went in Ella's place during that time. Stephanie came to Ella's house. Anna said this to her, Grandma, are you catching a cold? I'm just a bit under the weather. How did you know? Yeah, you looked a different color than usual. For Anna, it was probably a casual comment, but it must have reminded Stephanie of me. I said the first time I met Stephanie. Anna said something similar. Obviously, Stephanie decided Anna was also a strange child. So that explains this outrageous behavior. I understood why Stephanie did all this. In that case, I had one thing to do. I asked Anna about what Stephanie stole from Ella. If I could prove it, Stephanie wouldn't be able to inherit Ella's estate. This would be the ultimate revenge on stingy Stephanie. At the same time, I had Kyle look for evidence. After a few months passed, the estate inheritance discussion finally began. Ella's estate was supposed to be inherited only by Stephanie and her brother, Uncle Martin. Even so, for some reason, the lawyer summoned us too. In any case, we headed to Ella's house. Stephanie and Uncle Martin were already there. Are you guys here? We were invited. By the way, where's my adorable grandchild? 
Stephanie glanced around nervously. Why? I muttered in annoyance and responded, Tyler is with my parents. I wanted to see him. What a pity. It doesn't seem like it at all. I stared at her, suppressing my rising anger. The attorney begins to explain the inheritance. Ella left a considerable estate. First, there are the house and the land, and aside from those, there are several valuable antiques. Additionally, there is a significant amount of cash, however, Alice has already specified how her assets would be divided. The house and land will go to her brother, Martin, while Stephanie will inherit the cash and antiques. Also, though it's not an antique, a valuable painting that Ella owned will be given to Anna. Why? Great-grandchildren aren't entitled to an inheritance. What are you saying? What's wrong with leaving something to your granddaughter? But even if it were someone else, Anna is Stephanie's granddaughter. She doesn't even want to leave the inheritance to her granddaughter. How greedy can she get? It makes me see, finally, when the conversation pauses, I exchange nods with Kyle and speak up. By the way, I heard Stephanie was stealing here. Gosh, what are you talking about? Stephanie looks annoyed at my words. At the same time, Martin furrows his brow. Have you been stealing from your mother's house? I don't know what you're talking about. Stephanie pretended not to know anything, but I pushed her further. Anna saw you stealing, Stephanie. You can't believe the words of a creepy child. Stephanie raised her voice, then Anna teared up next to me. Anna really saw it. Be quiet. Shut up. As soon as Stephanie raised her voice, Anna kept her mouth shut. I instinctively pulled her close. I gave Kyle a signal with a glance. He noticed and placed his phone on the table. This contains something we borrowed from the neighbors. Borrowed? What's in it? Yes, a video of the neighbor's cat. Kyle says this with a straight face. Stephanie immediately bursts into loud laughter. Ha ha ha. A cat video. Is this something we should all enjoy? No, it's actually footage from a hidden camera. It shows you, mom. A few days ago, Kyle went to Ella's neighbor's house. There, he asked the neighbor if they had noticed anything unusual at Ella's place. The neighbor replied that they'd seen Stephanie carrying things out multiple times. For quite some time, in fact. She was caught on the pet camera several times, and the neighbor had kept the footage. I borrowed that footage. Wait a minute, that is. Stephanie became flustered. Martin watched her with suspicion. Did you take it out without permission? No, mom asked me to keep it for her. Stephanie scrambled for an excuse, but Kyle delivered the final BL. W. Your excuses are pointless. We've confirmed you sold the stuff without permission. What's more, we even got copies of the transaction history from the second-hand shop. B at Ain. Kyle dropped an envelope on the table. Inside was a document labeled, Purchase Record. Kyle continued, pointing to the paper. It lists your name as the seller. You sold paintings, vases, and other things. Well, M, what is it? Spit it out. Kyle's raised voice made Stephanie flinch, and she suddenly began to cry. It's not like that. We were struggling to make ends meet. H has been sending you money, hasn't he? But it's not enough. I'm so sorry. She had her head bowed as if she were crouching. Afterward, Martin interrogated Stephanie. Under his harsh questioning, she gradually started to open up. Here's what she says. After Andy retired, both he and Stephanie struggled financially. So Stephanie asked Ella for help. When Ella refused, Stephanie pleaded with me instead. With our financial support, they managed to get by, but there wasn't any extra money to use freely. So she set her sights on Ella's antiques. Selling those would bring in some cash. Apparently, Annie and Stephanie discussed this plan. So, every time Stephanie went to Ella's place, she would take valuable items, bit by bit. But when she feared she would get caught, Stephanie conspired to have Ella hospitalized. By having Ella temporarily admitted, she planned to smuggle out as many antiques as possible during her stay. While Stephanie was contemplating this, Ella actually fell. So, she managed to get Ella admitted to the hospital without any trouble. After that, it was all Stephanie's show. One after another, she took valuable items. She even took cash and used Andy's card to transport larger things. All this was captured on the neighbor's pet camera. I checked earlier, and a lot more antiques have disappeared compared to before. It's all going to be mine. Anyway, as per the will, I just collected it early, Stephanie brazenly retorted. I told her, do you mean the gift of the estate before she died? If so, the taxes, taxes. Oh no, wait, that's not right. Mom asked me to sell them. That's it. So where's the money? When I asked, Stephanie tried another excuse. The money went to the hospital bills, but the amount is too much for that, isn't it? I also bought some household supplies and other things. Stop nagging me. When Stephanie shouted this, Anna murmured in a small voice, Great Grandma is angry. Is she angry? Stephanie turned to look at Anna. Anna nodded and continued, Yeah, she's angry over there. She says to just admit what you used it for. What are you talking about? 
Stop saying weird things. Stephanie's eyes darted nervously as she wiped her cold sweat. I watched her closely and then asked Anna, Anna, do you know what the money was used for? It was for paying off debt, that's what great grandma says. Really? Paying off debt, right? I shot a stern look at Stephanie. She was nervously biting her nail, and it looks like there was quite a bit of debt. I don't know anything about that, really. There are all these collection notices. I tossed a stack of them onto the table. Let's rewind to a few hours ago. Before coming to Ella's house, we had visited in Law's place. Only Annie was at home, so we decided to question him first. One by one, we showed Andy all the evidence that we would later present to Stephanie. One piece of evidence after another was shown to Andy, who quickly got tired of trying to make excuses. He easily admitted to having accumulated a significant amount of debt through gambling. He also confessed that he had teamed up with Stephanie to steal from Ella's house. During our conversation, it became clear that Andy knew about Anna's ability to sense spirits. Without shame, he even said, if we could use that ability for gambling. Needless to say, I was furious, and Kyle was even angrier than I was. I'm going to report you for theft, dad. Hold on. You're really going to do that to your father? It doesn't matter if you're my dad or not. If you don't want that, pay back every cent. Kyle's raised voice made Andy shrink. Finally, he promised to repay the full amount of what he had taken from Ella. After we got Andy to write a written pledge, we took the collection notices and brought them here. I calmly said this to Stephanie, who looked stunned at the stack of notices in front of her. Well, M, no need for excuses. Just renounce your inheritance, at least for now. When I said this, Stephanie grimaced. Why? That's a whole separate issue. If you give up your inheritance, you can use it to pay off your debt. Either way, return what you took, I said, and Stephanie fell silent. That's when Martin raised his voice. Enough. One way or another, you're going to have to repay what you stole. But if you don't like it, I'll report you to the police for theft. Your choice. Pick the one you want. Since it's theft among relatives, she probably can avoid a criminal penalty, but it would still sound bad, and the other relatives would distance themselves. Perhaps that thought crossed Stephanie's mind. Soon, Stephanie said, Okay, I'll renounce my inheritance. She gave up her inheritance reluctantly in a low voice. Afterward, with a lawyer present, the procedures for inheritance were completed, with Stephanie officially declaring her renunciation. The proper process was scheduled for a later date, and so the inheritance dispute that had involved us came to a close. Let's head home. I'm sure Tyler's waiting for us, Anna. Let's go pick up the painting you got, Kyle. Stood up with Anna, and then she shook her head. What's wrong, Anna? Wait a moment. Great grandma wants to. Anna pointed to the corner of the room. But when I looked, I couldn't see anything. Kyle seemed to have noticed something. He smiled and nodded to Anna. Got it. Do whatever you feel is right. Thanks, Anna said before walking over to Stephanie, who was still kneeling. She gently patted Stephanie's shoulder and said softly, Great grandma said she has something for you. What? It's in the shed, Anna replied, pointing to the far end of the yard. There was an old shed there. Inside the shed, what's there? I also knew that there is a shed there while cleaning the yard. I used it to store cleaning. Tools, other than that, I didn't see anything else in there. I also doubt anyone added anything later, and if it was something valuable, leaving it outside would be risky. Is it really inside the shed? Yeah, she says, to open it quickly. Since Kyle is nodding in agreement. Ella must really be here, even though I can't see her. How mysterious. I felt a gentle warmth inside the shed. Stephanie dashed out of the living room, and the moment she opened the shed door, no way. There are gold coins in here. Stephanie's exclamation rang out, startled by the noise, Anna covered her ears. We did it, now we can pay off the debt. But as soon as she said that, Stephanie's scream echoed around us. No, no, no. Stephanie collapsed in front of the shed. Stephanie, what happened? What's wrong? I instinctively shielded Anna while Kyle rushed to Stephanie's side. He quickly turned back to me and whispered, Lauren, call a cab. What happened? I asked him nervously. In the midst of the conversation, I heard Stephanie's voice, where? Where have the gold coins gone? When I looked closely, I noticed Stephanie's hand had turned red, and nearby, there was a large centipede. It looks like this centipede got her. It hurts. Where are my gold coins? Stephanie kept uttering deliriously until the cab arrived. After that, we checked the shed, but there were no signs of any gold coins. What did Stephanie see to make her think they were there? In the end, the truth remained a mystery. And then something even stranger happened. After we took Stephanie to the hospital and brought her back home, we found Andy at the family house with an injured back. On the way back from the store, I found a wallet stuffed with cash on the ground. He hurt his lower back when he tried to pick up the wallet. However, the wallet was gone when he looked again, and there was no one else around. 
At that moment, Andy realized it was divine punishment from Ella. As we were talking, Anna murmured to my in-laws, Great Grandma says to be serious. She's watching you always. Needless to say, Andy and Stephanie turned pale upon hearing Anna's words. That seemed to be the turning point that made the in-laws suddenly become docile. Now they both work part-time, intending to return all the money they got from selling Ella's antiques back to Martin. Though their change is strangely compliant, they say if they slack off, Ella will appear in their dreams. That's why they can't afford to skip work. That's what they told me. Maybe it's just their guilt talking, but I decided to keep quiet about it. Anyway, I've been living a little more relaxed life lately, without needing to check on Ella anymore. I have some extra time. Still, I don't have enough to return to my job since I'm busy taking care of Tyler, and I worry about Anna too. Thinking this, I glanced at Anna as she ate her snack. What is it, mom? Doesn't it bother you, Anna, seeing things that others? Can't, I'm happy. I get to meet great grandma. Look, she's right over there. Anna pointed to the balcony. At that moment, I heard someone's voice, it's okay. I'll be watching over you. Maybe it was just my imagination, but I'm sure I heard it, Ella's familiar and gentle voice. In that peaceful afternoon moment, I couldn't help but smile. 